to, this is our, um, only our second um, third Monday 3D printing night. So um, this is great, this is a great turnout. Um, the, I um, uh, also want to thank um, uh, Buffalo. So, so uh, a reel like this, I think that's a two pound reel. So yeah, yeah, it's about 30 bucks. It's right? about one kilogram, right. It yeah, so it's about 30 dollars. So now this is this is um, uh, one pound for for thirty dollars, but twice the price for nylon versus uh, ABS or PLA. There are some people who have just started working on um, polycarbonate. Yeah. Well, Alex is just getting set up there, and. Um, I'll let Alex take over with SketchUp. We've got drinks and uh, two snacks too, if anybody wants. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Alex Fernandez. I'm an educator and educational technologist. I've worked within the Buffalo District and a number of other places. Um, one of the things I came across at a young age when I was getting into technology at like 22, 23, uh, was the fact that things were becoming open source, things were becoming free. And as he was showing there with Fingerverse, we have a wide variety of 3D models that we can use, that we can access from just about anywhere. Um, but the great thing is, is that these tools are not only something that are used in industry. Uh, what you hear about AutoCAD, you hear about SolidWorks, you hear about other design tools. Uh, but there's been this one that Google came out with years ago that recently has been bought out by a company called Trimble. Uh, I don't know how many of you have heard of it, but it's called SketchUp. And SketchUp is completely free for any Windows or Mac computer. Uh, it can be used to design things in 3D. I've used it to teach two-dimensional and three-dimensional design strategies to as young as fourth graders. And you'd be amazed what kids are able to do in this space because it's so much like these virtual worlds that we're all used to. Uh, so what I wanted to do is just give a quick demonstration of kind of an introductory lesson of what I do to teach people how to take the concept of drawing on paper and bringing it to life in a virtual space. Uh, and then on top of that, I've got one control device, which is a fairly new technology that actually allows us to interact with computers without touching anything. Uh, we've all heard about touch devices. We all have smartphones, iPads, and tablets at our disposal. And this is a very common thing. Everybody's used to it. We all know we hand it to a five-year-old and they know it like the back of their hand. Now, it's getting to the point where I don't know if anybody here is, how many people have seen Minority Report? Anybody in here? Okay, so basically when you're waving your hands and just kind of interacting and touching nothing, yet somehow interacting with an object. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is just a quick demonstration of how that works with this system and how it recognizes your body gestures or hand gestures inside that movement. Right here is Triple SketchUp, which is a very simple program. Uh, it uses your basic vectors, and basically the same type of components and tools that are structured inside your AutoCAD and your SolidWorks programs. It is basic, it's, it's, it's rudimentary, it's easy to figure out, and it's meant to be that way. Um, they do have a make version, which is completely free, and a pro version, which you can get for free or discounted as an educator or uh, a student. Um, so what do we start with when you're drawing? You typically start with lines, but because we're in a two-dimensional space, we're gonna talk about shapes. When I draw a shape, I wanna know the dimensions. It's as easy as drawing it and then defining the dimensions right by simply adding two dimensions. I've easily made that 700 millimeters by 700 millimeters. Now I've got an exact square. Say you wanna go ahead and you wanna replicate that. It's just as easy to go ahead and replicate that and paste it all over the place. Um, going into shapes, circles, obviously we know our radius. Now, how do we take this two-dimensional space, this drawing pad that we've had for years and bring it to life in a 3D space? And that's where this push-pull tool comes into play. It takes your X, your Y axis, and it brings that third dimension. It allows you to bring it up and actually create volume. So what you'll see here with this tool, it's as simple as just clicking and dragging and highlighting the different sections that you want to manipulate. 
Now within this space, you want to be able to change your perspective. It's all about view. Because you might draw something that's so big it's right in your face, you can't see it, you can't do anything with it. The nice part about this program is it allows you to zoom out. It allows you to manipulate and move around the objects. And even color them. I mean, as simply as, okay, I want to make this a roof. I'm going to take and I'm going to pick a stone roof. And I'm going to lay that on top of these objects. It's very simple to go ahead and color and design and change perspectives so that you can take these objects, which then will be very easily transported into a 3D printing uh, situation. And one of the things that uh, I've done since I came across this was I started finding objects that I wanted to recreate. Well, what could I actually do with this technology? Uh, so what I did is I actually found a simple object that was sold at a dollar store, and I'll pass it around. It's a tablet stand. It works for a smartphone. It works for an iPad. It works for just about anything. Very simple concept, simple plastic. Why is this so easy to charge a dollar or two dollars for? And I started thinking to myself, what can we do to go ahead and make our own? So I took this program and I drew a rudimentary sketch. He'll tell you how rudimentary it was. So I just basically just put together this very simple sketch and threw it at him. He printed the first sample, which is just a raised logo and just a simplified concept of one of these two wings that make a tablet stand. And then we started saying, how are we going to hinge this? How do we connect them? Because the first model is a simple plastic, which yes, it might have pretty good resistance and it might last a while, but it looks like it's meant to break. And, and that's something that I don't want to create something that's meant to break, so how do I take it to the next level? And he came up with a great concept of a dimple hinge. And as you can see, this program gets extremely intricate on the designs. So you're taking something like that and breaking it down into all of the fine-tuned little components of it, and you're also reducing the amount of material. You're making it something that you can make in your house. And here you'll see the prototype that we've got of a tablet stand that I plan on using as a fundraising tool for a community center. So instead of selling pens or giving away post-it notes at trade shows or you know, doing a fundraiser with baskets and things like that, why not make something that a kid designs and use that as a funding source? Why not take this creativity and hand it to everybody? Because it is all of ours. It's not something that we should go ahead and control and bottle up and put a name brand on and charge thousands of dollars for. This is just a great example of how you can take these tools and use them in a completely free environment. Um, so I'm going to go into interaction. What's the different components that can be used to go ahead and interact with objects? And what I'm going to show you is called the Leap Motion. And this is one of the first examples of a touchless controller. And the great part about this touchless controller is it actually allows me to interact and, and create with the detail and precision of human fingers. And not just one finger, like you can draw with a pencil, but as you'll see here, I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to place it over. And you're going to see all of my individual fingers are individual controls. And as I move it around, it identifies all my motion. Now, taking and identifying 10 different points of control, you can literally sculpt things in a virtual 3D space without actually touching anything. Uh, one of the uh, apps that they've come out with for this is called a clay molding app. So you can see, I can even take my finger and control SketchUp and do some pretty rough drawing. I mean, I'm working on, on setting it up and customizing it so that it'll understand different gestures. This is a very new technology. But what you're seeing here is the simple fact that control is not just a mouse anymore. Control is as precise as we can be with touching an object without actually having to physically touch it anymore. So what's reading your hand? What's that? Yeah, absolutely. It's just. No, what, what's reading? Oh, it's two different cameras, like the Microsoft Connect and an infrared grid that's created. So you have about a two foot by two foot square, or cube, would say, that is created, and then anything within that space is recognized as motion. Um, typically, it's looking to identify a wrist point. Um, it's somewhere on your forearm, and then your digits, all the way through each of the joints. Because as you can see, I mean, I believe there's a, a bending point for each individual. So this is just the new way that we're able to interact, create, and uh, this is an $80 device. So as you can see, the technologies that have been in science fiction movies that have been really out there in the future are, are now right at our disposal, and uh, they're also free. So I encourage everybody to start drawing in 3D and throwing us ideas so we can 
start printing stuff up and you know maybe even selling and monetizing or, or doing some good stuff you know for charity. So thank you everybody for your time.